On this episode of Cuesta and Dos, my brother David and I talk about the college football national championship and how it played out between LSU and Clemson. We go into the NFL playoffs and how awesome it's been and give our Super Bowl predictions. Talk about a little NFL news that happened while we were gone for the week and a half. Whether or not Conor McGregor is back in the UFC. The WNBA new CBA and what it could mean for the players in the league. More Astros sign-stealing fallout for other teams like the Red Sox and Mets. And then I rant about how much I hate the MLB Hall of Fame process and the baseball writers. So without any further ado, enjoy the show. One is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. <laughs> Two can be as bad as one. It's the loneliest number since the number one. What's going on, sports fans? Welcome to Cuesta Dos. I am Alex Cuesta. My brother David Cuesta is technically with me through the miracle of the interwebs. What's up, Dave? You know, sometimes I have like the urge to interrupt you during the intro because if people have listened to this before, they know the intro, and I just I feel like one. That's our phone. Yeah, see, <laughs> I hear that. It's karma. It's karma for what I want to do. <laughs> yeah, because you're now getting interrupted by the house phone, and it is well merited, and I'm happy that that's happening to you. And that's not going to get edited out, so enjoy that. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyway, we are recording two days later than normal because uh, my podcast with Gerard O'Donnell, Manchester Township uh, <clears throat> teacher and coach, is coming out soon. Uh, sorry, I'm <clears throat> dying over here. Apparently. That's coming out soon. And this he had to do it on Monday, our normal day. So we have a week and a half of information. So if anyone was coming into this, hoping to get a nice 30 to 45 minute show, good luck. Nah, that's not happening. Probably not going to happen. But we will do our best to get our opinions out, keep it as concise as possible, and not try to break off on tangents, but I can tell you I'm going to rant at some point. More than likely in the end, so it's going to be when we already don't have time and I'm not going to care. With that being said, we should probably get started, Dave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get started. We're going to start off with something that we've been talking about throughout this whole entire series. Which and... sucks because it's kind of old news now. Oh, yeah, it, really it is late, now. But yeah, it, we need to talk now. about it. We need to end yeah. this. But the CFP National Championship happened. Uh, it looked like it might have been a close game at first, and LSU just pulled away. They're they're, they're too strong. Uh, I think we both knew that was going to happen for the most part. Like we wouldn't have been surprised if Clemson came out and did well, but LSU just looked too strong. I don't know if you have any differing thoughts on thoughts on that. No, no. Well, you know, I thought it kind of went the way we thought. Clemson wasn't going to go down without a fight. Yeah, and they didn't. For three quarters, it was a football game, yeah. and it was a good game. And then in the end, out the just the overall talent of LSU. Trumped everything. Oh yeah, uh, it, it's it's just too good of a team. Uh, Joe Burrow looked way too damn good this whole season. Everyone loves Coach O. He he he. Nobody <laughs> he, knows what he he's saying. For breakfast. I, I don't know. The the man does whatever he wants. But here's a quick aside. Again, already going to go way too long. How does a school like LSU go from Les Miles, who eats grass, to Ed Ogeron, who you can't understand? Can't they, uh, both guys have brought them national championships, and that's awesome. But Jesus, just find a normal human. I'd listen. I'm They're fine lizard with people. They know. hire I, lizard people. I love Coach O. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. He's one of those coaches that you kind of got to love. Like, I, I don't see a reason to really hate the man. Oh, I don't hate him at all. He's a mix between Boomhauer and the coach from Waterboy. Yeah, like, no, he really is. He really, that's him. <laughs> all right, but, you understand like every fourth word he says. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And the, those misunderstandings may bring LSU even more championships. But the main <laughs> question we have coming out of this national championship is about Joe Burrow, of course. Mm-hmm. He is projected to go number one to the Bengals. The question is, do you think he's pro-ready? Uh, I think he is, at least confidence-wise. I mean, he obviously has the ability. A lot of college kids usually do coming out. They have the ability. But his confidence is otherworldly. He feels like he can get it done, and he doesn't care where he's at. Yeah. Um, one thing about Joe Burrow is he's a true senior, if I'm not mistaken. So he's a 22-year-old going up against a lot of boys. So that's part of his confidence, I think. Yeah. And it's weird because in the NFL, that's kind of looked down upon. 
um, to be an older rookie. And he's going to be an older rookie for their standard right now. He could be good for the Bengals because that organization needs a guy with moxie, but a quiet, calm, and stability, which Joe Burrow already seems like he has, where when he's in the huddle, he kind of, you could see the players responding to him. Yeah. He definitely demands the respect. And I feel like he's the type of guy that, regardless of his success or not, when he steps into the huddle, he's going to have six, seven, eight, nine, ten year veterans literally looking to him for instruction and not just because he's their quarterback because they believe in him. I yeah. really think he's going to have that effect. I think yeah. he is pro ready in some ways. We'll see if his physical abilities translate because that's always a test. I think in between the ears, he's pro ready. Yeah. No, I, I think the, I 100%. I think Joe Burrow is pro pro ready pro the pro ready mentality wise. I think his ability will be just fine. My main question <laughs> is: Are the Bengals ready? <laughs> I, I don't trust that organization. Really, I'm not going to lie to you. See, I, 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 can't find I a do when to I trust that organization. I do and I don't because we like to make fun of the Bengals now, and obviously for a while they were the Bungles. Uh, I mean, even Chris Berman on ESPN that was his nickname for them, the Bungles. Yeah, but there was a time where they had one of the best receivers in the game. Andy Dalton was a very good quarterback. They had a good running game. They had a defense that was pretty damn fierce. There was a five-year window there where the Bengals were a perennial playoff team. Marvin Lewis was a hell of a coach. And they were a good franchise. So this franchise has the ability to be good. They're not that inept franchise. That's so true. They've but... tasted that pretty goodness in the modern football era. We're not talking Jim Brown, Walter Payton either. Yeah, I, the thing, the main problem is, is Marvin Lewis was good for a time. The the Bengals' infatuation with keeping him on, when he really like at, at one point, it's just like you have to you have to cut it, man. Uh, yeah, you're you're helping us in ways, but it, it's just not working out. So you have to cut it off, and that's one of the problems sometimes with keeping a coach too long. Marvin Lewis, he wasn't a great coach for them. He was good. For a good amount of time, for a good amount of years, but he wasn't great. So it it, it I, I, they can do it, and Joe Burrow has to be uh, Joe Burrow and Joe Mixon. They're both going to be good players for you, I believe. Uh, Joe Mixon already showed he can be a very good running back. So you can build around those guys. Uh, I mean, AJ Green's old and hurt, which is unfortunate, but you can build around those guys. It's just can they actually do it? Maybe they. I mean, they have a new coach and everything, but we'll see. In defense of the Bengals, I feel like your attitude towards them, not in a negative way, but just your kind of conception of them being a terrible franchise, I think they're self-aware. And I think they knew during the Marvin Lewis time, it might be tough to attract some big name guys because of that perception, because that they are the perception that they are not a great franchise. And they had something good with Andy Dalton going, and he worked well with Marvin Lewis. And yes, they hung on too long. But I just think they didn't want to risk. Yes, there might be better people out there, but do they really want to come here? We have Marvin. Marvin's a good coach. Let's ride this out. I can't blame them. They're not the Cowboys. They're not the Pats. They're not the Steelers. They're not even the Ravens in their own division. You know what I mean? So oh, yeah, that, that you know what that that is fair. That is fair. I'll give them that. I, ultimately, it should work out for the both of them. Hopefully, for Joe Burrow. I hope he has a good career. But yeah, no, it should work out for them, and I'm hoping for the best. A topic that we're going to talk about, I think, next week, I'm going to save it. I want to look at the free agent quarterbacks, and we're going to talk about where they're going to go because for the first time in a long time, there's a lot of really good ones that I think are going to be on different teams. So that well, that's a topic for next week. We're not going to talk about that this week. And that's no problem. But we're now going to transition into the playoffs. Playoffs? Um, Honestly, Dave, I haven't seen a better playoffs in a really long time. I can't remember a playoffs where even the blowouts were entertaining. This playoffs have been fantastic for the NFL. Um, a perfect blend of new school style play and offense and old school. And it's going to be great because we see the ultimate clash of new and old school in the Super Bowl. How do you feel about what's going on, Dave? I love this playoffs. Uh, I, I've liked these playoffs. I, I've liked them. I, I do think the conference championship games could have been better. I feel like the Titans Chiefs one was good in the first half, but after that, it kind of showed that the Chiefs were just too good of a team. The Titans had a great run, but 
They couldn't really keep up. They couldn't get Derrick Henry going, which was surprising to say the least. Uh, I feel like <laughs> the Niners blown out the Packers. I mean, yeah, some of it was fun, but I think most people wouldn't don't enjoy blowouts <laughs> like that. You know what, though? It was the way they did it. They found a way to make running the ball fun. Like, I, it's, it's weird. Watching the Niners run, most of your methodical run teams, it's like, ah. Oh. Even the Jets, when the Jets were at their peak, pounding the rock, there were certain games where it was like, oh, my God, we had to sit through a 13-9 game again. Like, cool, we won. But it was a boring style. For whatever reason, Kyle Shanahan has a fun style of running the football there. Well, I don't understand the, it. No, no, the, the reason why it's fun is one, they have their fullback. Ustrek is very good as a utility back. He can yes, come he out is. and catch the ball, and he can also block extremely well. Yep. George Kittle, great blocking tight end, and can receive the ball. So that's and that's a great last name to say, Kittle. Kittle. Exactly. It's George Kittle. And the, the way Kyle Shanahan runs his offense and uses his running plays is there is usually a motion right before the run. So there is a motion usually towards where the run is going. You hike the ball. Everyone, everyone moves everyone. And in that motion, man, may be a crack block, but it also may just be a stock block that seals the edge and, it, and is able to either get him outside or get him through a hole. It's a lot of fun to watch that happen. Most of the time, you don't see a lot of motion during run plays. It's just you hike the ball and you go. So a fun aside about uh, Kyle Shanahan, um, our buddy over at the Personal Foul Podcast, uh, Colton Gesser, posted up on Twitter. It was a video of Kyle Shanahan quite literally calling out exactly what was going to happen at the pre-play. And it wasn't like a completed pass. It was a penalty. He called it out. The play starting, obviously, like you said, he loves motion. They were going in motion. He goes, he goes, watch here. He goes, George is going to run it out. He's all over him. We're going to get an interference here. We're going to get one. Goes quiet. The play happens. You see George Kittle getting raped, and they throw the flag. And it was to a T. He knew, the, he knew everything that was happening. And by the motion... He saw their defense and knew they couldn't cover Kittle. They were going to have to um, interfere with him. Yeah. It was a pretty cool moment to watch. Yeah, no, it's he is very good at making offense fun. <laughs> that, that's what it is. He's very good at making offense fun. Now, whose offense is going to be more fun in the Super Bowl? That's the question. <laughs> Uh, I, you know, and I talked to, there's a buddy at work. I work in construction, so I put on insulation, which is basically playing with cancer all day, but we're not going to get into that. Um, there was a pipe fitter I talked to. He was wearing a Niners, uh, sweatshirt. He's a fan. So I was like, who do you got? What do you think? And he's like, you know, we bullshit a little bit. We talked. And I said to him flat out, my theory about this game is if the chiefs allow the Niners to get ahead, like they allowed the last two teams. I think that Niners defense is good enough to not allow the Chiefs to explode like they did against both teams and run away. But if this game is close or tied at the half, the Chiefs will probably win it because I just think they're going to wear down the Niners, especially if it's close and if you have to see Jimmy G make more plays. So that's my my official prediction is I don't know because I'm torn. <laughs> Because I like the Niners, I vote. You know, I grew up a Jerry Rice fan, so I have an affinity for that team. But man, I wouldn't mind seeing Andy Reid get a championship. So uh, I, I don't know. My official <laughs> prediction. <laughs> it's fair. I feel like there's a lot of people. My official prediction is the Niners. I feel like they are the more complete team, but I see no reason that the Chiefs can't win this game. I think the main thing that's going to have to happen that what we're going to see whoever wins this is can the Niners keep Patrick Mahomes from running outside of the pocket? Now, if the chiefs win, it's going to be on the back of Patty Mahomes. That's a fact. Yes, 100%. Now, and does and, he rise to Russell Wilson lore levels if they get this Super Bowl this time around? Uh, not this time. I mean, he's already a fantastic quarterback. I don't know about Russell Wilson lore. He's going to have to do some Herculean stuff to beat this uh, well, Niners defense. It's like Russell Wilson, his team would be down like two scores in the fourth, and then he comes back and wins. If Patty Mahomes does that, then he's near that level, like that lore I mean, level, they've been down two scores going into the second half, the first no, two I, playoff I the, games. I said the fourth quarter. Now, I know. Obviously, no, Patty Mahomes is a fantastic. I'm not trying to take anything away from him, but I yep. mean, like, just that lore status of fourth quarter comeback style, that's a different kind of style. But, I mean, what they've been able to do is incredible so far. I mean, they just go down, and it's no one's worried because they're going to come back anyway. But 
I think the main thing that is going to claim this game for either team is can the Niners keep Patty in the pocket? If they can't, he's gonna have he's gonna have more time to throw the ball and more time to get the ball downfield because you just can't cover these fast guys for that long. It's that simple. And See, once they take me, off, you're gone. Quickly, it comes down more to can they cover Travis Kelsey? Because the problem is, even if you do keep Patty Mahomes in the pocket, Kelsey gets open. And there's moments in, in the games where, yes, we remember the big moments where Patty's scrambling, but he stands and delivers, and a lot of that standing and delivering goes to Travis Kelsey. No doubt, <clears throat> but I'd rather have the Chiefs try to be more methodical with their drives and their explo- they, they Listen, they love their explosive offense. That's where they make all their money. They can do a methodical drive and they can score on you like that, but that helps you more because you're able to come back with a drive of your own. If they're just being explosive and putting these points up really quickly, it makes it a lot harder to come back and you become much more one-dimensional. You want to be able to play your game as well. I agree. You convinced me. I'm going for your Niners, even though I wouldn't <laughs> mind. Like, I don't have any, like, I don't have any horse in this race. I'd be happy to see both these games. Yeah, no doubt. It's both 51 to 49 in my mind, whoever, whoever who I'm picking. The Niners yeah. is 51% chance. Yeah. I, I, there's no reason that the Chiefs can't win. So quickly, cool moment um, before we move on to the NFL news. Cool moment um, that happened at the end of the NFC Championship where Mike Shanahan was presenting the NFC Championship. And Jed York, the CEO of the 49ers, was there to take it. And Mike Shanahan was about to hand it to him. And he flat out was like, no, you need to hand it to this guy. And his son walks up and he hands it to Kyle Shanahan. Just a cool moment that, you know, I don't know how... How proud can you be as a father of what your son has just accomplished, yeah. even not even withstanding a Super Bowl championship like that? Had to be a great moment for the Shanahan's. Yeah, I mean, it's a 4-12 and 12 team to an NFC champion. What more can you say? Yeah, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. All right. So now that we're done being sentimental, um, I have a few tidbits on some NFL news. Dave, I'm just going to run through them real quick. Yeah. And <clears throat> give you a chance to do some quick comments on all of them. All right. First, Luke Kuechly, uh, one of the best middle linebackers in the game, if not the best, for the Carolina Panthers, officially retires. A bevy of injuries derailed one of the most explosive and one of my favorite players to watch. I think he was uh, Joe Hackett of the Playbook's favorite player in the league. So, sad to see Kuechly go. A guy that's staying, and Mr. Longevity, Larry Fitzgerald, returning for a 17th season, signing a one-year deal with the Cardinals, he could still play at a super high level, and I think the happiest guy is Kyler Murray because of this. Um, next, Tom Brady continues to stoke the flames of he may not be in New England next year, and if he's not in New England, it's not because he's retiring. Said he's open and willing to go through the process of playing for a new team. Uh, you know, what a fortunate thing to be a 43-year-old testing free agency for the first time. <laughs> That's insane. But that doesn't bode well for New England fans. Because I'm telling you right now, there's a few destinations that I can see Tommy Terrific going to and right away making that team a Super Bowl contender. The man can still play. And last but not least, this happened, announced a few hours before we did this show. Eli Manning is retiring on Friday. Um, Best quarterback in the history of the Giants. Two-time Super Bowl champion. I think a surefire Hall of Famer, people argue. I also think Luke Kiko is a Hall of Famer, just even though he did some short stuff, but I think he's that good. Dave, how do you feel about all this nonsense? <laughs> all right, uh, Keekly, uh, very sad to hear. He is fantastic middle linebacker. Like you said, arguably one of the best. It's really either him or like Bobby Wagner. Hall of like, Famer or no? Uh, <sighs> Talent-wise, yes. Uh, you can make an argument no because of stats and longevity, but I, I would put him in there just because of how good he was. And Yeah, the eye test. Be. Yeah, exactly. Um, Larry Fitzgerald, um, more catches and drops. Uh, no, more tackles and drops. Sorry, I got that wrong. Yeah, more <laughs> tackles and drops. Kyler Murray's ecstatic because that's just a shorthanded receiver he can go to when he needs a big play. Yep. Tom Brady, I still think he's going back to the Patriots. I feel like he needs to be open and willing because he's in free agency. This is See, the first time he's having to deal with this. I don't. I think he is going to Chicago. Nah, I don't know. I about think that he's going to go out of the AFC as a courtesy uh, okay. to the Patriots. We, we can discuss that next week. Yes, we can. We can discuss that next week. Uh, yes, Eli we retiring. Uh, we both already shared our opinions on this when he had his last game. Yep. I think it was a fitting last game. Eli got sent off for the standing ovation. He's definitely a Hall of Famer in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Best Giants QB in history, no doubt. Uh, 
even though we rag on him because he makes the same face and makes the funniest faces in the NFL. Uh, <laughs> he, he, deserves, he deserves everything that you, every praise you can give him. Hall of Famer, without a doubt. Yeah. I think anyone that argues it is out of their mind. Uh, yeah. And now, since we got all that NFL news out of the way pretty quickly, I yeah, know it was not we, bad. Didn't, we didn't linger, but we didn't need to. No. We're going to move on to another Hall of Famer. I, I don't think you can dispute this either. It's another Hall of Famer, but this one is no in doubt. UFC. Conor McGregor is back. Uh, if you watched the fight, uh, you didn't watch a lot. It was in 40 seconds. He TKO'd Donald Cerrone. If you paid for the fight, I'm sorry. I, you got to watch the prelims and the main car. <laughs> Get everything you can in because this could always happen. <laughs> this could always happen. You have to watch every single thing of that night, of that UFC night, because this could always happen in the main event. But yeah, Connor hit him with a, bo- a lot of left shoulders in the clinch and like changing levels in order to hit those left shoulders. And that was disorienting the Cerrone. Broke his and, nose. Yeah. Broke then his head, nose. Then a head kick happened and that was it. That was, that was all he needed. Yep. But, uh, 40 seconds. Yeah. 40 seconds. In- incredible. I mean, obviously Cerrone is old, but he's not, not like he's awful. He's a legend in the game as well. But yeah, Connor's back. Apparently he was sober for four months. He spent a million dollars on his own health. Maybe it's a new Connor. Maybe we see a lot. Maybe it's even better fighting from him, which is terrifying if that's possible. But uh, <laughs> I know Dana White has been kind of pushing that there's most likely going to be a Khabib versus Connor rematch. And honestly, I still don't think that's a good idea for Connor. <laughs> I really don't. I thought it was really good to see Connor in good form. This is early Connor we saw. Just the way he was, you know, methodical but aggressive. Even in that 40 seconds, you just saw his game plan. His game plan was to pick his spots, but also not take the the, the pedal off the metal. Because right before he landed that kick, Cerrone had a pretty solid kick that Connor blocked and then just saw an opening and went right for it. Um, it, We got to also put this into perspective. It was Cowboy Cerrone, 36 years old, 11 losses, 35 wins, a, a legend, a hell of a fighter. Now 12 losses. He needs to retire. He needed to retire two fights ago because this is his third loss in a row. So I'm not completely on the Connor is back. Because if we're saying Connor is back, then we're saying Khabib is only an obstacle and he's going to beat him. That's what Connor is back means to me. No, I don't know about that. And you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? He was dominant, dominant when Pete Connor. Yeah, so, but I don't know if he would have been the same. Uh, that could be Matt. That's a different fight, man. I mean, Pete Connor about, beats Khabib. I'm telling you right now, Pete Connor beats go. Khabib. That's a tough go. It's see for me that was, that, but that's my Pete Connor is the best striker in UFC, bar none. And if that's the case, anyone that tries to stand up with them loses. And I get it. Khabib isn't necessarily a stand up guy in that way. But Connor even Connor beat a lot of very good grapplers by his striking ability. So the rematch will happen. They're stupid for it not to happen. It will be the most highly um, the biggest uh, pay that Khabib's ever going to have. It'll be second for Connor because the hundred million he's never going to get near in UFC that he got <laughs> no, for fighting for Floyd. Me, no. So um, the best part about this for me is Connor doesn't need this. He really doesn't. He made his money fighting Floyd. Yeah. He could go off in the sunset, be known as one of the best of all time, which he already is. Most, one of the most controversial of all time. And But you know what, though? Help bring UFC notoriety. He's oh, right yeah, up there no with, you know, your Lesners, your Rouseys, your very few, your Anderson Silvas that were literally box office. Yeah, you didn't have to be a fan of the UFC to stop and watch him. So... Uh, the Khabib fight's going to happen. That's without a doubt in my mind, unless they go with the Nate Diaz rematch, which I they would be a waste of time to me. I, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing a Diaz rematch just because of how much they hate each other. I also kind of want to see him fight Masvidal because, I mean, Masvidal has been kind of picking up steam and he just beat Diaz. So I would like he, to see that. He needs to beat Khabib. That's, a, that's, the, that's the mountain he has well, to they, climb. That's the mountain that Connor has, no doubt. He has to finish that. I honestly don't know if he get uh, Khabib to me. He's just yes, Connor. If Connor is able to keep him up, then Connor can win that fight. But I don't think he can. I don't think anyone can. If Khabib gets you to the ground, that's it. You're not getting up. But we forget Pete Connor's quickness. That was his game. 
is yeah. he got away from all of these amazing grapplers because he was just quicker than everybody. And his instinct was second to none. If we're dealing with sober Connor, who is dedicated to fighting, dedicated to film, dedicated to training, and we get that level of focus that he had when he was trying to prove everybody wrong. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we may see a completely different outcome, no doubt. Uh, yeah, because when he got to the top, he didn't care anymore. That's true. He cares again. It's obvious he cares um, based off of his, you know, even the pre-fight, the, you know, there wasn't the normal trash talk. There was a little bit, but it wasn't your big show. Connor was there for business. Connor was there to knock him out. Connor was there to win the fight, collect his paycheck, get back to training. And he did that. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it, but I'm not ready to say Connor's back. That, no, that's fair. I, I, yeah, I'm excited for it. Too. I'm, I'm just excited for the UFC. It's, you know, they, they, they've still been doing great, but with Connor back, you get a lot more people in, invested in the UFC. And if Khabib beats him twice convincingly, that also raises Khabib's star oh, so much higher. Oh, yeah. And then that sets up for a Masvidal Khabib. And that will be the clash of the two Titans. Yeah. And there you go. Connor could be a great stepping stone, or he could be Khabib, beat Masvidal, and then just tell everyone to suck it and go off to the, <laughs> the sunlight right off in the sun as the greatest ever. Because that would make him the greatest ever. That's true. Right next to Anderson Silva. I think Silva's still better. But I digress. So we're going to jump from UFC, which gets mega notoriety, to news that I'd like to say, David, I'd like to think that me and you are as fair as possible when we cover all of our sports stuff. I don't see many other uh, podcasts or anything outside of ones that focus on this that talk about a lot of women's topics like we do. I'm not tooting our own horn. I'm just saying that we like to spread it out. And so to me, this news that... I mean, about... I, well, it's just you hear everything else everywhere else. We, I like to I like to try to put new things in here that you haven't heard. So that... Yes. I, exactly. <laughs> so you got to spread it around. We do. And the WNBA getting a new CBA, I read the article, is actually a huge deal. A huge deal. ESPN has been doing their part with their deal, really trying to push the WNBA. And that had to play into this because we all know TV deals drive everything. So it's about time that I think the WNBA has now been a mainstay on ESPN for at least two, three years now. So they finally got a new CBA, some minor details in it. Your top players will finally be making actual, you know, rich people money. They'll be making a minimum of half. Uh, they'll be making, I think, a, a ceiling of half a million dollars, which is still paled in comparison to the men. But at least they don't have to do anything else. They could just be pro athletes and focus on that. Their training facilities are going to get a major upgrade in the CBA. The benefits are going to get significantly better, including maternity leave, which I think is you know a factor that the men's leagues don't have to worry about. Mm -hmm. Um. And also another nice thing is the floor of the contracts, I think is now at like 107000 which again, now they can just focus on being athletes. $107,000 a year is nothing to scoff at. It's decent money. It's what, you know, all of us average Joes aim to make a hundred grand. That's our goal. So, you know, I think that's, it's a good sign of things to come. I'm happy they finally got it done because Players like Maya Moore, Elena Deladon, Diana Taurasi, three players who Kobe Bryant just said today could play in the NBA if they wanted to. I think Kobe needs to slow his role, but that's a great compliment. My only concern is the product needs to sell. And we've seen the numbers. They're steadily growing, but they're not great. There's a lot of money to be doling out compared to what they were doling out. Dave... Can they sustain this? Can this money sustain? Because this can either make them and make them blow up and get bigger, or it can fold the league. Well, you know, I'm hoping it can. I think it can. I think it can mainly because, listen, when it comes down to it, the, the women's players, they, they have just as much basketball ability as basically any man, <laughs> any men's player. It's They're the same extremely game. extremely good. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the same exact game. They're extremely good at what they do. I would love to play pickup on the court with them. They'd embarrass me if we played one on one. But oh I love my them. God, on, it wouldn't be close. Team. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So, <laughs> so I think it, can, it. That's the reason why it can work out is because that they have the ability. They. It, it's. I don't know if it's a marketing thing. I don't know if it's just uh, an attitude towards the WNBA that that's why some people aren't watching. I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like it can work out because of their ability. And I'm. Ha I'm happy that listen. 
they, we've been talking about this for a while. They, they never made a lot of money. They all basically had to play in the Euro Leagues as well just to keep going with their careers. And now they can actually stay in the WNBA, like you said, and not have to go do other things, and they can make their money. I, I Listen, if you have the money to bet on a league where there's top-notch talent, you might, you might as well. I <laughs> Like... You're giving them this money thinking that there can be something good coming out of it. You don't do this if the risk is way too high. I'm going to do my tried and true thing now to piss people off that might be of the opposite gender. Watch your own gender. Support these damn women. Support them. Because, you know, I don't know how bad it sounds or not. A lot of men are not going to watch the WNBA. A lot of them aren't. A lot of them love the NBA product. They like seeing the dunks. They like seeing all the razzle-dazzle. It is up to majority of the women population to support this. It's a great move for these female athletes. It's a stepping stone now for other female athletes in other leagues that are underpaid to make money. What needs to happen here is they need to get support. And it starts with their own gender. Watch these women, enjoy their sport, buy their jerseys. Please make this successful and don't make the WNBA have any negative repercussions because of this. That's my plea. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I feel like it can work out. I feel like it should work out, but yeah, only time will tell. Well, that's, that's the only way we'll know. Yep, and here's the hopes. We'll update if, as things go on, if there's any updates to it, but we shall this isn't the last time you will hear about the WNBA on this podcast ho ho yeah <laughs> so <laughs> we're moving from a promise for a better future for a league to a fallout a really big fallout that we've been continuously talking about 3 weeks in a row has. now 3 weeks in a row and I thought I said we were done with it last week but it's a I gift know, that keeps no on way. giving no way we're done with it we couldn't have been done with it no. everything's still going to come out so if um, you probably already man. know if you paid attention to the sports world Astro fallout is still happening. Their sign stealing scandal is still happening. Those jerks. <laughs> Those <laughs> absolute jerks. Anyway, <laughs> so did I don't did we bring up Cora? I thought we brought up Cora. We talked about what was going to happen to Cora and possibly Beltron. Okay, but this it, it, a lot happened. I think this happened probably on like Tuesday or Wednesday, so it was right after our show. That makes sense. But then. we didn't okay. necessarily cover it ourselves. Yeah. So both. Alex Cora, Carlos Beltran, Red, Red Sox manager and Mets manager. They're both gone. Uh, today, so yeah, still what I am too. I got in for that position either. Nope. So yeah, the fallout is still being felt throughout the league, and I mean, I I, I saw this all over Twitter. There was a lot of talk about that they were using buzzers as well under the jerseys. In fact, and then one, some pictures of Jose Altuve, you can kind of see a, 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 like an image of a buzzer, which you can dispute that. <laughs> the one thing that was hard to dispute was that after Altuve hits the home run off of Chapman to go to the World Series, he's running towards home plate, tells his players, don't, 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 don't touch me. I got to keep the jersey on. And then goes straight into the dugout, goes straight into the club. That that tells a lot. <laughs> okay, okay. I have my opinion on this, and you know I've been hard on Altuve. I've been hard on the players. I've been hard on the Astros. Two things. The ones with all the, the device pictures, they're creases in the uniforms. I don't yeah, care if it's I'm an saying. Astro player or not. That's Stop. That can definitely be disputed. Number, that, two, number two, the Altuve thing hasn't proved to me either because the guy just doesn't want his shirt ripped off. I don't care. I don't want my shirt ripped off as a celebration either. Okay. That's a stupid celebration. It was just really, it, listen, it's just really, you hit a home run off of one of the best closers in the game against the New York Yankees. This is go to the soccer. World Series. This is no, soccer. But I'm sorry. I, I, I just don't think it's hard to contain your excitement for that. I'm sorry to tell you this. And it, it was just weird, man. I, I feel like that. Listen, it's not hardcore proof. It's not hardcore evidence that says they definitely used a buzzer, but it's definitely weird. Here's the you thing. You got to look at that. Here's the thing. Do I think they used the buzzers? Hell yeah. I absolutely think they did. Do I think they were smart enough to maybe not put it under their shirts? Probably they all wear these sleeves. They all wear There's better places for them to put it than their damn shirts. You know, these guys that orchestrated this, 
that are helping them run it. They're techies. They're more sophisticated than that. I can guarantee that. I don't buy anything that we've seen in terms of pictures and things like that as evidence. Do I think they did it? Yes. But I don't buy any of that as evidence. Um, in terms of Cora, Beltron, Cora had to go. I think Cora is going to get anywhere between like a three and five year ban. I think that's coming yeah. because it, all the damning stuff in him with the report from Manfred that basically he was the one that went to the video guy and set up the camera and all that. He's going to be screwed. And like, I don't think Hinge and Lud and uh, Ludnow's careers are done. I think Cora's career may be done in baseball. I think he needs to find a spot in a booth somewhere and just go call games. Um, Beltron, I heard a lot of Mets people saying he doesn't have to go anywhere, this and that. That's just Mets fans being Mets fans. He has to go. He It, it doesn't make a difference if, if anyone in a managerial position there that was on that team, they have to go. So I think it's a travesty that the players have immunity. Happen. Yeah, no. yeah, we didn't get that. I was going to get no. to that right after this. No, I, you know, I mentioned it. It's a travesty <laughs> that the players have immunity. And uh, we argued, I argued basically with a um, friend of the show, Matt Santos. He's been on the show plenty of times where he was basically irate about it. And I said flat out, number one, Manfred doesn't want to fight with the MLBPA. That's number one. That's a, they're a strong union. And number two, that's their bread and butter. We're not talking about suspending one big superstar to make a statement. We're talking about suspending probably two superstars and three stars at minimum between Bregman, Guriel, um, uh, what you call Altuve, Correa, Springer. That is five really big names now. Yeah, Manfred's not doing that. He's not going to hurt his product. He's not going to tell the Astros to field their Double A squad. Yeah, and for it's those, never happening. Yeah, and for those that don't know, uh, it came out earlier today that. The uh, Astros players got immunity from the MLB if they told their whole story, the whole story about what happened. If they disclosed all the information, then they would get immunity. That that was the deal that they had with the MLB. Which is how investigations work. So it's not surprising. But again, these players can be lying through their teeth. As long as all of them lie together, Manfred's not doing a damn thing. Because he'd be stupid too. Because you know what? If the Astros go out next year and Altuve's a jerk because he's fanning the flame going, we're going to be in the World Series. Well, you're an idiot. But if they go out next year and they do play well and they win 100 plus games, we're going to be talking about, well, they're not cheating anymore. That's going to be the, that's going to be the topic. It's not going to be they're cheating. We hate them. It's going to be they're not cheating anymore and they're still playing really well. So I guess these guys are talented. This is going to go away if they play well. It well, all does. Yeah, well, It'll go away for them. I think the whole league is still going to feel a lot of this during the season because, listen, it's it, it's not going to go away <laughs> that this happened and that it could happen with any single team in I, in the MLB. It's I think they're going to be the go most away. hit team of all time. I think they're going to get hit with a lot of baseballs. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of chin music. I think there's going to be a lot of pushing them off the plate. Uh, it's going to be an aggressive season for them because there's a lot of guys that feel like they were cheated by them. And yeah, I can't wait I mean, to see the... Too. I can't wait to see the few shoving matches that the Yankees and them get into because it's going to be a <laughs> quote-unquote fight in baseball, not like K-State, KSU, where chairs are getting thrown. But <laughs> we're not getting into that one. That's a topic for another day. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it was uh, – it's a crazy situation. I don't think we're done with the fallout, though, because we're going to wait on Cora, and if he gets penalized, Beltron's not getting penalized because he was a player. We have to see who each team hires. Yeah. Uh, it's an interesting situation. A little bit about Luis Rosas. He's been with the Mets for 13 years. He was a minor league player. He's um, related to, um, uh, whatchamacallit, Alou, Moses Alou, and um, Bobby Alou. Mm -hmm. They're both related to him. And he's been in the Mets organization, and he's managed at Class A, Double A, a few different levels. So he has some experience in managerial, not big league. But he's a guy that's won, you know, best managerial candidate of the year three times in the minors. Seems like a guy that's been ready to come to this point. So it could be a good hire for the Mets. We shall see. I mean, you're going to hope it's a good hire. It's something they had to do kind of last minute. <laughs> so. the, the good thing for him is he has a great lineup to start working with. That is yeah. a hell of a hitting team. If he can manage the bullpen correctly, then the Mets can have a decent season. Yeah. If they don't get hurt everywhere like they always do. Yeah. So, 
<laughs> yeah, no, this fallout isn't over, and who knows what other stupid things may come out. But we're going to move on from infamy to the Hall of Fame itself. Okay, so the Hall of Fame results came out. <laughs> and I know how you feel about this, but before we get before you get to ranking, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna bring up we're both Yankees fans. Jeter uh, and Walker <laughs> in the Hall of Fame. I, I, I for some reason I blanking on other names. I just remembered for this topic right now. But Jeter <laughs> missed a unanimous vote for the Hall of Fame by one. And I if it's true, I think it was 336 out of 337. I think the percentage was like, what, 99.7? He jumped up ahead of Griffey as the highest percentage for a position player. And if it's true, who was the one vote? If it's Dave Williams from Barstool, then I'm boycotting Barstool. <laughs> and all Yankees fans should boycott Barstool. And they should let their stupid Massachusetts, <laughs> Boston-loving, semi-really actually funny and entertaining <laughs> selves go to hell. Okay. I, I, I'm not going to go ahead and say that's true, but it definitely is one person. No there was a card was. that was out that said Dave Williams, and I, okay, it looked like an official be, card. That could be anything. We have no idea. He could have just put that out as a damn joke and just said, watch people go crazy over But that. I know, I think he does, because he was a reporter, so I do think Dave Williams has credentials. He which might, if he is, Listen, no reason to jump on it. We may never know who it is, but there's no reason to jump on someone who may be completely innocent. All right. Can we talk about some actual stupidity that I saw online? Yeah. Yeah. So it was good news that, you know, big news that Jeter jumped Griffey because Griffey had the highest number and uh, we all knew how see. And it, it goes to the topic of baseball writers are jerk offs and they suck and they don't know what they're doing when they don't unanimously vote in guys like Hank Aaron, Ken Griffey Jr., yada, yada, yada. Those are all, in my eyes, those are unanimous votes, guys. Yeah, should, I don't honestly, care what the baseball should. writers did. <laughs> They're unanimous in my eyes. Derek Jeter is now the same way. He is a unanimous vote. I don't care what anybody says. If you don't think Derek Jeter is a Hall of Famer, then you're just an idiot. That's plain and simple. Doesn't matter where you, that'll be like us saying Tom Brady's not a Hall of Famer. Of course he is. But the first thing a lot of Yankees haters and non-Yankees fans said that I saw online is, Shouldn't be mad because Griffey's better anyway. Griffey's better anyway. Griffey's better anyway. What difference does it make if two retired guys are both getting screwed out of unanimous votes at the Hall of Fame? And you know what? Griffey wasn't better. Griffey couldn't stay on the damn field. Yeah, he was more talented, but Griffey was always hurt. Jeter was never hurt. So let's talk about that. So that pissed me off. Baseball writers are stupid. That pisses me off. And... I'm going to finish your last part. Barry Bonds and Roger Clemens still aren't in because, oh, they did steroids. That pisses me off. Who cares? They all did steroids. It came out now. Pitchers and batters all did steroids during that era. It was even. Put the guys in. Jesus. Are you good? No. (laughs) Put Pete Rose in, too. (laughs) Idiots. Before Pete Rose dies, put him in. (laughs) He's not allowed in his own hallway. (laughs) <laughs> he isn't. He's not allowed in the hall. He's simply not. He got uh, yelled at. <laughs> Skechers commercial, I think it was. It was awesome. Yeah, it's, anyway. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, the unanimous thing definitely hurts. But, I mean, the, the one thing is, like, what, what do you expect? <laughs> I just don't, I don't Do you expect anything less? Like, I want to start really? my own Hall of Fame you, where the you, writers don't get a vote. But did you legitimately believe he was going to get in unanimously? See, they need to review all the time because they know all these ballots and all these pompous jerks allow their ballots to be public after 14 days. Like they mark that because they're proud of their stupidity. You need to be reviewed. And if you are the few people that are stupid, you should have your credentials ripped off. You shouldn't be allowed to vote anymore because it's not cool. It's not funny. It doesn't make you self-righteous. It just makes you a pompous jerk. And most of the ones that do it aren't very good writers anyway. <laughs> They're the ones that are looking for it because their articles don't sell. Nobody reads them. <laughs> All right. So, oh my God. Listen, I, I, get I hate it. the whole Hall of Fame process. I, it's I, so I, dumb. I, I understand the anger, but like I said, I just, I just don't. I just don't see the reason to get mad over something you expected in the first place. Dave, we're going to start our own Hall of Fame. We really are. And it's going to be former players and coaches only. Only. No writers at all. So they can cry. So they can cry. But we had a relationship with them. And that's one of the main reasons why Barry Bonds isn't in. It really has nothing to do with the steroid usage. It's because he was a jerk to the media. 
And that sucks because Kurt Schilling isn't in because he's a jerk to the media. And Kurt Schilling's a Hall of Famer. Well, that's that's part of the problem, I think, with the Baseball Hall of Fame is that it has to do with your attitude during the game, during while you play, too. It, re- it does. Like, it actually has to do with that. The that's fact the that these guys are butthurt by this is no. embarrassing for well, them. Yeah, for, you, for listen, being listen, adults, you that's them, embarrassing. You, you also have to blame, like, just the, the credentials of getting in. Like, what, what I, I really don't care about your attitude of getting into the Hall of Fame. I mean, we, we can take this to the NFL Hall of Fame as well. Terrell Owens isn't in for... God knows what reason. As long as you didn't get in trouble off the field and didn't, you know, Pete Rose is an argument because he did break a major league rule. That's an argument. But if you didn't get in trouble off the field and you were just a jerk to a bunch of self-important morons, you should still be in. Yeah, unless you, like, legitimately, like, committed a felony. Right, let's stop <laughs> I feel like you should be. Lawrence Taylor is in a Hall of Fame. <laughs> Lawrence Taylor was the best, well, probably everyone says the best football player they ever saw, but he openly did drugs. He was a, a son of a bitch, was a womanizer, and everyone is like, oh, Lawrence is a great guy. <laughs> that, if that guy's in the Hall of Fame. Anyone could be in the Hall of Fame. He, I think he fell short of not killing somebody. Yeah, but I, I just think that's the whole problem with like a lot of Hall of Fame a lot of Hall of Fame process, whether in the MLB or in any league, honestly, is that it should really just be your talent and your career during your time in that sport. Your attitude might have been awful, but unless you committed a terrible, terrible felony and you did the horrible, horrible things that have landed you actually in jail, then I feel like you should be in the Hall of Fame. I don't know if we could talk Hall of Fame anymore on the show. <laughs> it makes me so mad. Why? It makes me so mad. I feel mad. like we definitely can. I feel like we definitely can. We should. Ah, so we should. Mad. Last thing before we go, because we actually have to close out the show. Last thing before we go, Philadelphia Flyers mascot Gritty is an absolute jerk. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know. How true is that story? It just got re- ESPN said he's being investigated for punching a 13-year-old in the <laughs> he back. He's being investigated. <laughs> I want to know how true that story is. The dad's it, description is fantastic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that he playfully like tapped on his head, walked away, and then he's the way he described it, gritty Sprint. full speed punches him in the back. <laughs> and I and people that have listened to the sports opinion show, they know who Julie is, my wife. She's been on the show. She had no idea what gritty looked like. So I showed her a picture and go, imagine this going full speed at anything. That that kid lived the nightmare of every single person on planet Earth right there. The nightmare? If that happened. But tell me how funny that is. Like, if you're a spectator, watching Gritty waddle as fast as he can to throw a punch at a 13-year-old in the back. No, and listen, it's hilarious. <laughs> and, and, and see, but that's also part of the reason why I'm like skeptical on how real this is. Because the, the Gritty promotional team is fantastic. And they would do something. They would bring up, make something up like this, dumb enough. Maybe that. Yeah. Maybe this to no, get may, something going with gritty. This might just be legitimate, and they might have just. Been, this guy might just be getting fired, and the promotional team is like, just do it anyway. It'll just show the <laughs> tough guy Philadelphia attitude. Just I, I mean, do it. I, I don't know, but I, yeah, it's it's not it's not something a mascot should do. I, I feel like we should say that. Do not go sprinting and punching thirteen year old children. No matter how funny it is, I, I mean, if they're think... fourteen, yeah, go ahead. They're in high school. Thirteen, still in middle school. <laughs> yeah, don't exactly. do it. Exactly. <laughs> Thirteen, they're just getting into their teens. Let them let them get acclimated. And after that, then you could. Do I it. mean, that kid has a great story. Got it. Probably got like a <laughs> picture with gritty, and then fifteen seconds later, is getting decked by him. Like <laughs> that's a story that will either make you proud or scar you. And I'm hoping. I don't know. I don't know. This generation, he's probably scarred. Ah. No, nah, no, nah, he's going to have a great time. He's going to have a great time. We'll find but, out this kid's a hockey player or not. If he gets up and just goes and plays, watch this. Watch this comes full circle. That kid ends up playing for the Flyers. <laughs> he like, destroys Gritty. Oh, my God. He'll be like the Lopez brothers of uh, NHL and just go on a mascot destroying <laughs> streak. Yeah, yeah. Spree. All right. Oh, but uh, I feel like that's, that's a good one to end it on. Uh, I that do want to do. It got away my anger. <laughs> one somber note. To, one somber note that I want to put in. Uh, Mr. Peanut has died. Yes. Oh Very God. sad. We Very lost sad. another one. I feel like everyone, we should have a moment of silence, at least privately, for Mr. Peanut. What did um our buddy John Natoli in our uh, little chat say? Who have we lost in the last like uh, few years? The narrator no, all, from... All today. All today. All today? Dragon Ball Z narrator, uh, a Python, and Mr. Peanut. 
Uh, today's a day that will live in infamy. Yeah, no, today's today's not a good day. The, Jan- but, I mean, Wednesday, January 22nd of 2020. Jesus. I guess in a way it does have to be a good day because I didn't have to use my AK. So, you know, it's it's working out. It's working out. You're way too young to be able to throw that line around. <laughs> <laughs> but all right. With that, we are closing out this episode of Quest of Dose. David, any last words? Uh, I... I, I want to say i actually do not have an ak please <laughs> please do not think i do have an ak and do not come searching and doing anything because that's just that's not that's not right i don't have one i, I never did but I if you do will. and if you did you're a damn american patriot for it Ha-ha. yeah but hey, listen listen triggered listen at any, <laughs> shut up shut up at any time if you have an ak and you don't have to use it just remember that's a good day Everyone, just go Google those lyrics if you don't know what they are. And if you have to do that, you're embarrassing. Anyway, David can find him on Twitter and Instagram. Twitter is dquesta308, Instagram, Questa Cola. I'm Alex Questa. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at A underscore Questa30. Find Sports Opinions on Twitter at Sports Opinion 30, Instagram, Sports Opinions 30. Go find us on Facebook. Go search um, anywhere you find the podcast for Sports Opinions Podcast. You will find the main show. You will find this show, Quest of Dose, and now you will find a new show. Kyle Doctor has started a new show that is a beautiful blend of sports and comics where he has on comic book writers that are also sports fans, and he talks about both. And it's amazing. It's a great show. It's called We're Young But Just Us, a nice play off of Young Justice, if you didn't catch that, a comic book. And definitely go check it out. Definitely worth... uh, Listening, definitely worth um, supporting KDOC. And without any further ado, everybody, I hope you enjoyed the show. So long.